Tonight, we're going back tonight to John chapter 17, if you'll permit me, part 2. John chapter 17, again tonight, and talking about the absolute truths from the Lord's Prayer. And going to go into it a little bit deeper tonight and further with these scriptures. Profound truths that go along with the prayer that our Lord Jesus prayed in behalf of his own that he mentions here that he loved in John 13 and you and I that have been brought in and saved and got those that will be saved, that will believe in this great chapter. And I mentioned this morning that he didn't, he, he did not pray for the world and I meant to say, hope oh, nobody misunderstood me. I do believe that he, that he has compassion upon sinners and he does pray for them that, that uh, need to believe on him. But anyway, for the world system and all that's headed up by Satan, he don't take the time to make no mention of those. But anyway, we're going to pray tonight and read from verse 14 throughout the end of this chapter. And there's so much here in this chapter, and I'm just kindly... Uh, going through the tulips, so to speak, just hitting the highlights. But anyway, a great, great chapter. The longest prayer in this Bible and the most sacredest prayer. It's our Lord petitioning the Father for himself and then for his own believers in Christ. Father, we thank you for the privilege on this evening, Lord, that you have gracious with to come to the house of God. Give us weather fit to be out on the highway. And Lord, we pray for all these requests tonight. Lord, it seems like there's so much sickness and death, so many things going on around our country. We pray for our, our country tonight. Lord, what, what a mess it's in. Sin has taken its toll upon the masses of people. And Lord, I pray you'll help us as a church, Lord, that we may find our place close to thee. Lord, in between our services, on our knees before you, and our hearts in your word, Lord, claiming your word and holding fast to the faithful word of God. Lord, lest we come to a place where we fall by the wayside like a lot of folk have and give up on the church. And Lord, lest we be ashamed when you appear. I pray you'll help us. Lord, that we we'll stand strong in these days and fight the good fight of faith. Pray you'll help us to bring this message in the manner you want it brought. To you be all honor and glory, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And we're looking down now at John chapter 17. Verse 14 through verse 17. Now I might give you this little outline and that way I'll get that out of the way if I don't get it all said tonight. It's a lot of it. But from verse 1 through five, verse 5, we see the profound truth of salvation. Taking in salvation's plan and purpose. Salvation's purchase, redemption. I'm telling you by the person of our Lord Jesus and we see from verse number 6 through verse 8, manifestation, the mystical, the mystical relationship between God the Father and His Son, and that between us, you and I, that are believers in Christ. And there will be more to be said when we get along in these scriptures, if I can get it all in. From verse number 9 through verse 20, we see representation, the interceding work of our Lord Jesus, His redeeming work in verse 1 through 5. But then along in this passage, we see preservation. In verse 11 and 12, we see sanctification in verse 17 and verse 19. We see identification in verse 20 through 23. And then it ends up. The climaxing prayer of our Lord Jesus. What's embodied in this great prayer that our Lord prayed in our behalf. Not only preservation, sanctification, identification, but glorification. And that will be at the appearing 
of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now let's just back it up now and read a little bit. John chapter 17 and verse 14. And the Lord continues now, and he said, I've given them. He's talking about folk that are saved here, folk that have trusted him as their personal, their personal savior, those that he's given his words to. And he's going to talk about it again. Seems like he does that a lot in John 70. What the Father hath given us. And we could see in this passage what the Father gave the Son. That's every believer. And along with what the Father has given us that are saved. I have given them thy word. And the world hath hated them. Because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Now three distinct times in John 17, the word world comes up. More than three times, but three distinct aspects. We see the world having to, having to do with the earth. Right here in John 17 and verse 5. And the world has to do with man Kind. Mankind in general, men, women, boys and girls, men and Adam. And then the world is used as to the world system. And we're going to see that on down here in verse number 16. But anyway, he said, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one even as we are one, I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it that the love wherewith Thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. Now we started out this morning with verse number one, and we talked about these precious words, and directing not only to what he's saying, these words that have been preserved and kept for us, and God has given us in this Gospel of John, these words of our Lord Jesus Christ. And of course the words that he hath spoken in John chapter 16. Even all the way back to John 13. In the beginning of his upper room discourse. And having spoken unto his own further betterment in John 16. We see him making mention of the saints persecution. That's John 16 verse 1 through 5, the saints persecution. He's going to soon leave them and he's going to remind them 
in the world. You're going to be hated by the world. And the world thinking they're doing God a favor to get rid of us. I'm telling you. But in the world, he said, you're going to have persecution, which means tribulations. You're going to have trials and troubles and all of us alike. We have on the same common lot on this eve. God's people go through times of trouble and, and terrible times sometimes. But anyway, the Lord forewarned them so they could be forearmed when the trouble come and reminded them of the Spirit's promise. He's talking about the Holy Spirit in John 16 and verse 7 through 15, the Spirit's work in conv conviction toward the world. Oh, we could just pause a little bit on this Sunday evening and give God glory that He sent the Holy Ghost of God on that 50th day, the day of Pentecost. Oh, yes, thank God. Sent the Holy Ghost to baptize that infant church into Christ and take up His his abode in us that are saved and to fill us so we could go forth and be a witness in not only, as he said in Acts 1 8, in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the other parts of the earth. Amen. The Spirit's promise. He promised to send the Spirit on that Pentecostal day. Amen. If I use that word that way, but anyway, it was 50 days. That's what it means. And thank God the advent of the Spirit. But he, we, he mentions the work of the Spirit, how that He's brought conviction. Amen. Brought salvation to our and then he reminded them in John 16 of not only about the saints' persecution and the Spirit's promise, but his sacrificial death and his scriptural resurrection is all laid out here in John 16. He's keep telling them over and over as he approaches the hour at the cross. He kept telling them, I'm going to Jerusalem and I'm going to suffer and I'm going to die and I'm going to arise again. Amen. He could foretell what was going to take place. Amen. And so he foretold. Amen. And then his second, he even makes his mention of his second coming in John chapter 16 and verse 19. But all oh, he ends this chapter 16 up with a saying of good cheer. The sayings of good cheer. Now let's look at it. John 16, 33, These things have I spoken unto you. And I mentioned this morning, here he is taking these, uh, these passages of Scripture, paragraph after paragraph, chapter after chapter, encouraging believers in Christ. Oh, having loved his own, he loved them to the end. Amen. And thank God that's just like the Lord to give us encouragement. Oh, to comfort and counsel our heart. But in John 16, 33, these things I have spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have over come the world. Amen. That's just like the Lord to give us word, words of comfort. Amen. Because he knew these disciples surely didn't, and they didn't really understand about him going away. But anyway, we're, we're seeing here the acknowledgement of his presence in John 16, 33. He said, I've spoken these things unto you that in me you might have peace. He, he brings up the assurance of peace and the awaiting of persecution when you he said in the world you're going to have tribulation and the availability of of provided victory he said i've overcome the world and by faith we are overcomers on this sunday evening. and john wrote five verses in first john chapter five or oh, verse one through five to remind us that we've overcome the world by faith amen who is he that overcometh but he that believeth that jesus is the christ amen and then we're seeing here now, as we approach this chapter again, not only his precious words, but his person, his person of divine deity, his person of pre-existence, and his person of 
perfect humanity. Amen. But then we notice his position. He's lifted his eyes up to heaven. And we see his prayers. Amen. That's where I want to pick up now tonight and talk about these profound truths that we that we're gleaning from from the Lord's Prayer of John chapter 17. And first of all, I've done outlined it just a little bit. John 17 verse 1 through 5, we see the profound truth of salvation. Amen. And it's fitting for our Lord Jesus because he's getting ready to go to the cross and make a way out for sinful man. Amen. Thank God paving the way. Thank God. He said in John 10 and 9, I am the door and by me if any man enter in, he shall go in and out and find pass. He won the right to be the door of salvation. He's a way of salvation. John 14, 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man can come to the Father except that he come by me. And so salvation's person is right here in verse number 1 through verse number 5. He's getting ready, thank God, to fulfill, uh, I'll tell you, to fulfill what he had been come out of eternity in the covenant of eternity path to bring salvation to mankind. Amen. And my favorite verse I use over and over in 2 Timothy 1, 9, he said, who hath saved us and called us according to it his own purpose and grace which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. And this ain't the afterthought of God. I'm telling you, when he laid in his mother's arms that first Bethlehem night, I'm telling you, thank God. And eight days later, I'm telling you, when they brought him down to the temple for the circumcision, God called on an old man that was waiting for redemption of Israel, Simeon. And said, Simeon, you're not going to die till you see the Lord's cry. And he picked him up in his arm, picked up more than just a baby, amen. He picked up God manifested in the flesh, the incarnate Christ. And oh, thank God how that this word of salvation has come through him, amen. Thank God the way of salvation and the word of salvation. And there's a will aspect of salvation incorporated in these verses 1 through 5. All oh, when he said uh, right here in this text in verse number 4, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Amen. Oh, if that says anything, that says the will of God. Amen. Oh, I'm telling you, as I mentioned this morning in Gethsemane, nevertheless, and he had prayed, Lord, if it be thy will, let this cup now pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Amen. Or oh, when we read in 2 Peter 3, 9, it said for the promise of God, he's not slack concerning his promises in his addressing that scoffing crowd that says words of promise of his coming. And he said for God is not select concerning his promises, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but all come to repentance. Amen. First Timothy two and four said, Who would have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. And so Christ is here in his redemptive work. Amen. That he accomplished on the cross. And oh thank God. Salvation's purchase and salvation's purpose. Amen. Setting forth his redemptive work. Amen. The blood that he shed on Golgotha's hill ought to redeem wretched, lost, hell-deserving, doomed sinners. Amen. And I'm glad, thank God, he had us on his mind even before the cross. When he was on the cross, I, I was on his mind. You and I, every one of us in this house, I tell you, he had sinners upon 
upon his mouth. That's what sent him to the old rugged cross someday because of lost, dying humanity. He saw it back yonder in eternity past. You say, where's that verse at? Psalm chapter 14, the Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there's any that did seek God and understand. And he, he went on to say, we've all turned to our own way and the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. And before Adam even came along and before Adam fell, he could see that in eternity past. And now here he's fulfilling the word. He's getting ready now in John 17 to fulfill the work that he had been sent to do. And he mentions that a couple of times, even right here in verse 3, whom thou hast sent. Amen. And then we see not only south the truth, the profound truth of salvation, but we see the truth of manifestation. Amen. Verse number 6 through 8. And he said, I manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word, and that and now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them thy words which thou gavest me. And they have received them and have known surely that I came out from thee. And they have believed that thou didst send me. Amen. What a manifest, what a revelation that God has made unto us. Amen. I tell you, I'd have never been saved had God not a single me out. Had God not got me under the sound of old time preaching and the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and all oh, God doing it all from the very start. Amen. I say, tell you, God getting me under the preaching of the word of God and I was already in the church, sitting on a church in the choir loft, by the way, at the Ridgeview Baptist Church up the road here, but God singled me out that night, amen, the Holy Ghost that brought conviction and gripped my heart, and I fell out with sin and self and Satan, and, and I tell you, fell in love with the Lord Jesus, amen, believed on him to the saving of my soul, all I'm saying, we see the truth of manifestation, he's revealed to us who we really were, amen, by the Spirit of God, and we could go back, and I won't have time tonight, but in John chapter 16, he talked about the Spirit's promise and, and the Spirit's work, amen, toward man, and how he said he would reprove the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment, amen. Oh, thank God for the convicting work of the Holy Spirit, and I say there will be no Mr. Man, woman, boy, or girl, no one will ever know the Lord Jesus as their personal Savior know him aright in a way that God would accept except the Holy Ghost do a work of regenerate he done the work on the cross in redemption but oh now thank God how that the spirit has come amen he's regenerating children amen bringing us into the family and the fold of God and oh thank God his, his word. He give us his word and we believed it and trusted him for salvation. Verse 8 said, I've given unto them the words which thou gavest me and they have received them and have known surely I came out from thee and they have believed that thou didst send me. Amen. The manifestation. What a revelation. Amen. He's not only made us, made known the gospel to us and brought regeneration, but he's made over to us his righteousness. Amen. That's why we can stand in this pulpit on this Sunday evening and say that I'm justified. Not going to be justified, but am justified right now. Amen. That means just as though we'd never been a sinner, just as though we'd never sinned in the sight of a holy God. That's how God sees us. Amen. 1 Corinthians 1 30, of him are ye in Christ, who of God is made unto a wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. 
redemption. Eh? All that we needed, Christ has provided and given unto us. And that's part of this manifestation. Amen. And then we're picking up on this representation. Amen. Oh, verse number 9. And notice verse 9, verse 15, verse 20, and verse 21. He mentions, I pray. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for those which thou hast given me, for they are thine. Verse number 15, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Verse number 20 again, in this King James Bible of John 70, neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. And then verse 21, that they all may be one as thou hast Father art in me and I in thee, and they also may be one in us that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And so I'm glad we have one to represent us tonight. Amen. And I know at this point of time he had not he had not went to the cross and went through resurrection and through his ascension and set him down. But I'm telling you, thank God, it was on its way. And I'll tell you, he filled up. He, he, he went through every process, going to the cross, fulfilling the scripture, coming out in resurrection that had been predicted and prophesied down through the history of this Bible. And I tell you, ascended up in his ascension and sat down in his intercession and we got one representing us in the third heaven on this Sunday evening. Amen. The high priest, and I go over that a lot, the high priest of our profession, Hebrews chapter number three. Amen. I'm glad, thank God, we don't need a pope or a priest down here. I tell you, he forbids us to call man, any man father, but I'm glad that you and I that are born ones, we've got a right relationship with God the Father, whereby we can call have a father. We can call God our father and Christ, I'll tell you, has made and paved the way that we could have a right relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. And so representation is right here. Hebrews 9, 24, and I'm taking the time to thumb over there tonight. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 24. And I'm not trying to get out of preaching tonight, but I really try to respect a little bit, not get too long tonight. But Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 24. Look what the Lord said. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hand. He's talking about down here. But which are the figures of the truth. But into heaven itself. Now to appear in the presence of God for us, for us, amen, and he's there for us in the very face of God, representing us, amen, all oh, that prophet was God's spokesman, and he'd speak for God, but that priest, amen, thank God he was that one that interceded for the people, and that's what our Lord Jesus is, amen, the high priest that can be touched with the feeling of our infirmity, all oh, the high priest that continued ever, Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, the high priest that can be trusted, the high priest that cannot be terminated. Amen. And oh, I'm glad we've got one in the heavens that represents us. Amen. Thank God when we get at our very lowest. Amen. I'm glad, thank God, he's attentive to our prayer and he knows whatever we're going through. And sometimes the burdens get so heavy, we seem like we can't carry them. But I'm glad there's one that can sympathize even when we go down to the funeral home and we try to sympathize with people and at our very best we're miserable comforters as Job said in all of his trial but all oh, I'm reminding that the Lord Jesus sits there in that body on this Sunday evening and he's acquainted with ever down, down falling and every problem that we have down here every single thing we go through with he's already been down the way and paved the way to be our faithful and merciful high priest able to succor them that are tempted Hebrews 2 verse 18 
Amen. And so we see representation. Amen. And then I'm going to step it on up just a little bit tonight. And we see preservation. Amen. John 17 verse 11 and 12. And our Lord said, Now I am no more in the world. He's speaking ahead again. As I mentioned this morning. And he, he could say, he could do that. He could speak as God. And he said, But these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Amen. All the profound truth of preservation. Amen. I'm glad he's keeping us. Amen. The same God that keepeth Israel. The same God that's looking over that little nation of people over yonder in the far east on this Sunday evening. All oh, the apple of his eye. I tell you it's even written them on the palms of his hand. Amen. All oh, the watch care of a sovereign God for his own chosen. That same God that preserves it and preserves Israel and will one day bring them the remnant of Israel I tell you to a place of, of redemption and a place of restoration to the land but that same God that's preserving this Bible I hold in my possession this authorized King James Bible it's the same God that's keeping you and I amen now let's just look at it in a twofold manner now he's keeping us safe amen our safety. Look at it. John 17. Notice this blessed old book said in verse 15. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Oh, let us be reminded he's our protection on this evil. The devil had done got a lot of us killed. I tell you, if it had not been for God keeping us saved, he put a hedge around Job and and, and let the devil get attack Job in many aspects, but oh, he wouldn't allow God, he wouldn't allow the devil to ultimately destroy Job. I remind you on this day, God's hand of protection is over us. Amen. And I know we live, and Brother Jesse mentioned about this wicked world, and I tell you, it's getting worse and worse. And if God don't have his hand upon us, protecting us, no doubt the devil and his crowd will try to destroy us. Oh, but I'm reminding you, he prayed for us here, our safety that will be kept from the world, the world system of religion. The religious world hates God's people that believe this book and keep us from the evil, really the evil one, which is Satan and sin. Oh, I'm reminding you, I'm telling you, we see preservation, the profound truth of preservation. He's not only given us safety, but he's given us security. Amen. The Lord said to while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none is of them is lost but the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled. And all the greater truth of that, while he was here, he said, I kept them in thy own name, which thou gavest me. But I'm telling you, he's ascended up and sat down and sent the Holy Spirit of God to put a seal upon us. And thank God he's got us marked on this evening where God's property, I mean mark for ownership, amen. And he's put a seal upon us, Ephesians 4.30, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you're sealed unto the day of redemption. 2 Corinthians 1, all oh, this King James Bible, and I'm taking the time, don't use these verses very much, but look at it. And we're going to take the time to look at them tonight. I may make this a third if you'll 
permit me. These messages from John 17, there's so much I'm wrapped up in these verses. But look at 2 Corinthians 1 and verse number 20. For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him amen unto the glory of God by us. And, and, and Paul saying all, the, all of them, amen, that is made to the church, amen. Oh, thank God, they're true, they're amen. And he said, unto the glory of God by us, now he which establishes us with you in Christ and anointed us is God who hath also sealed us, amen, and given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts, amen. I'm telling you, Christ said, while I was here, I kept them in thy own name, those that thou gavest me. But oh, I'm telling you, thank God on this Sunday evening in this good age of grace, the Holy Spirit, I tell you, has singled us out and put his mark upon us. We belong to God. He's in us and we're in him. And thank God, and not only being sealed, but oh, he's given us the gift of eternal life. That ought to shout your heart to glory that God led us in on eternal life, which has always been with God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy. And here's the promise of eternal life. Titus chapter number 1 verse 2, in hope of eternal life, which God who cannot lie promised before the world began and assures you receive Christ as your personal Savior. That very instant, He made you a son of God, put you in the family of God, and thank God, and sealed us with the Holy Spirit, and give us the gift of eternal life. Amen. And this verse number 3 here in John 70, and this is life eternal that they might know thee, the only true God in Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Amen. John 17 2, I missed that one. And thou hast given him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Amen. And the fathers, and, and this is going right along in this passage, I'm telling you, the father's gift to the world or better said the God's love gift to the world is his only begotten son. Did you know that? John 3, 16. Oh, I tell you, that he said, for God so loved the world. He's talking about the world of mankind, of humanity, centered. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting that's the father's gift love gift to the world of mankind but all the ever believer is the father's love gift to Jesus Christ seven distinct times in John chapter 17 we see this truth unveil I'm telling you every believer being the the father's love gift to Jesus Christ. We've been given unto him. And then along with it on this evening, thank God. I'm glad he's given us the gift. Not only he's given his words, and his, he wants us to have full joy down here in verse number, uh, well, let's look at it. John chapter 17, verse 13. And now come I thee, and these th things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in them. The Lord wants us to have, he's give us joy, amen. A lot of times we don't rejoice, we don't claim it, amen. But I'm reminding you among the gifts that God has given to us that are saved, he's given us the gift of of eternal life. Amen. All he said to the sheep, sheep in John chapter 10, my sheep hear my voice and a stranger, they will not follow. I am the good shepherd and I give my life for the sheep. In John 10, 28, I, and I give to them and I give to them eternal life and no man's able to pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me. There's that phrase again we're seeing in John 7. My my Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man's able to pluck them out of his hand. I and my Father are one. I'm telling you, God has sealed us by the Holy Ghost, made us his 
very own, protecting and preserving us and keeping us. Amen. He's keeping us because we've got eternal life. This hog horse garbage that goes along that says saved today and lost tomorrow. That I'm telling you, I'm, I'm afraid that crowd has, has called God a liar because they've not believed the record that God gave of his son. And I'm thumbing over to 1 John and I may just slow it down and stop here and, and finish it up on the next message of the Lord. But look at 1 John chapter 5. All these verses of assurance. 1 John chapter 5. Notice what it says. He that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Him, I'm glad we've got a no soul salvation on this evening. I'm glad we have a now salvation. Now is our salvation nearer than when we believe Romans 13 11. But I'm glad we've got a never ending salvation. I'll be saved on tomorrow. If the Lord permits me to be around on this earth, I'll be saved on tomorrow as I was the night I got born again. Amen. And all oh, I'm telling you, I'm glad to remind our hearts when we come to the last verses of Romans chapter 8 that great sa sa salvation uh, message that Paul gave about our, our condemnation being being no more amen but all oh, I'm telling you no separation no nothing's able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus Romans chapter 8 them following verses from verse 35 and so we've seen preservation amen I'm glad that God has given us he put us on a firm foundation amen oh I'm glad he's he's put put to our account amen his divine righteousness amen I'm glad thank God the old account has been settled amen and we're not hoping we're going to make it we're not in during to the end. We're not trying to climb up the rough side of the mountain to make. We're already in. We're in the end. We're in Christ. Holy and without blame before him in love. Ephesians 1 4. He decreed that back yonder. And I, I'm favored that what John is really getting to when he talks about those the Father gave the Son. I'm really thinking he's got Ephesians 1 4 when he said that God had chosen us in Christ before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him and let God decreed all the way back yonder in eternity that everyone the spirit would bring in he had put in Christ and in Christ we are complete at Colossians 2 9 and 10 but then he talks not only about our preservation but he talks about our sanctification and I'm I'm going to have to close right here. We'll pick it up. We've got enough preaching to do for another message and more. To God be all the glory. But sanctification. Look at it in closing. John chapter 17. Notice in verse number 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. And all that means something to us on this Sunday evening, our Lord prayed for us. Amen. All the way for our salvation and his redemptive work that is encompassed in the prayer that he prayed. Amen. Before he went back to the Father. And all oh, thank God our, 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 our identification with him. Him and us and we and him. And all oh, this sanctification. All oh, the progress. I believe he's talking about progressive sanctification right here. When we got saved, we were sanctified. He, positional sanctification, I call it. He set us apart for the purpose to save us and call us by his grace. Amen. Put us in his eternal purpose and plan but all on a note of progressive sanctification you and I have come to this house on this Sunday two times on this Sunday to come in this house and the Lord is setting us apart he's getting us ready he's preparing our heart for the days to come and getting us around the blessed word of God sanctify them through thy word thy word is true oh it just feels so good I'll tell you I go 
go through the week and it's always good. I tell you, when getting around and doing things and you get nasty, good to get a good bath. Amen. Get cleaned up. And John 15, 3, spiritually speaking, now you're clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. And our Lord prayed. Oh, he prayed for our salvation. He prayed for our for our sanctification. Amen. All oh, that we'd be set apart and, and separated unto him. Amen. All oh, that makes it good on this eve that the Lord's got it all. And leaning upon the prayer that he prayed in John 17. Father, now I come to the close.